Hello folks, this is Miss Knappenberger. We are going to start with some poetry. Our first poem is The Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. So, a poem is usually broken into stanzas. This is one of our basic units of poetry. A stanza is a group of lines. Stanzas usually get numbered. Stanza one, two, three, four, etc. But so do lines. So be careful. You have to be very clear if you are ever writing about poetry. In lines 19 through 20, the poet says blah, 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 blah. But you also have to be careful that you could say in stanza three, the poet says. So just make sure that you're aware that there are two sets of numbers going on there. If this were a song, a stanza would be called a verse. Not all poems have stanzas, though. So here is a copy of the poem that we are about to read called The Jabberwocky. And you will notice that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stanzas. You will also notice that even though the first stanza and the last stanza are technically the same, they do get their own numbers. We don't suddenly go back to one. We don't go one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Like you do with rhyme. With rhyme, rhyme is when the ending sounds of words are similar. For example, old, cold, run, fun, leather, weather. Perfect rhyme is when the sounds rhyme exactly, like old and cold or run and fun. We're not stretching it, we're not squishing it, it rhymes exactly perfectly. Slant rhyme is when the rhyme sounds close enough. A lot of poems written 300 years ago used to rhyme then when spoken in their original accent and do not rhyme anymore. So a lot of the poems that we read now have slant rhyme now. Other examples of this might be eyes light. They kind of sort of rhyme. Warm, swarm, they sort of rhyme. Or fate, save. They have the same A sound, but the T and the V are a little bit different. Now, rhyme scheme is the pattern of rhyme in a poem, and each rhyme gets assigned a letter. So if the rhyme is old, cold, it would be A. Old, cold, mold, bold, foretold, um, stuff like that, and they would be A. Some poems have to have a specific rhyme scheme. So if you're reading a Shakespearean sonnet, there's rhyme scheme will always be A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G. A ballad usually goes A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C. Okay, so this poem, The Jabberwocky, is by a fellow named Lewis Carroll. He was born in 1832, and he died in 1898. He was from England. His real name was Charles Lutwidge Dodson. He is most famous for his two novels, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. He also was a deacon, which is a religious leader. He was a mathematician, and he was a photographer. So I'm actually going to... Uh, go back to a couple of slides, read the whole poem at once, and then we're going to go stanza by stanza so that I can also point things out as we go. So, all the way back. Okay. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the boral groves and the momraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And, as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tolgy wood, and burbled as it came. 
One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frabjous day, kaloo, kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borrow groves, and the mome raths outgrabe. <laughs> Very odd, interesting poem, isn't it? All right, so starting with that first stanza, Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borrow groves, and the mome raths outgrabe. So you can see we've already established a pattern of rhyme. Toves and borrow groves, wave and outgrabe. Notice many of these words you might not recognize. Lewis Carroll was really famous for making up words or combining two existing words to form a new one. Combining two existing words to form a new one is called a portmanteau. You can understand the intention behind the words by using context clues. A lot of times, too, he is associating the words with other similar words, and so it gives them a little bit of a meaning. So, twas brillig sort of kind of sounds like brilliant, so maybe it was a beautiful day. The slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. Gyre and gimble both sort of sound like motion words, and they're being used as verbs. And gyre and gimble kind of remind you of pitch and yaw on a ship, maybe. And so the slithy toves are perhaps moving and undulating in all kinds of ways. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub-jub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. Note, you read poetry from punctuation mark to punctuation mark. A lot of people like to read one line and then pause, and then read the next line and pause. But notice, please, how between the third and fourth lines of the stanza, there is no punctuation. So those third and fourth lines need to be read Beware the jub-jub bird, pause, and shun the frumious bander snatch, and it all goes together as one. Otherwise, it would be where, beware the jub-jub bird and shun the frumious bander snatch, and it's not quite the same. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the manxum foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. I especially appreciate about this stanza that Carol has flipped the sentence structure. So instead of saying he sought the Mangsum foe for a long time, long time the Mangsum foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree rather than he rested by the tum tum tree. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of glame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. Burbled is another one of those portmanteau words that now we use all the time. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal sword, the vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. This is a very different stanza. This is the climax of the poem. Did you notice it told a story? We started with our introduction. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. We come to the rising action, the introduction of the problem. Shun the frumious bandersnatch. Beware the jabberwock, my son. We come to the actual... Um, Facing on of the problem, here is the Jabberwock, he meets the sun, and then he left it dead, and with its head, it is the climax. So, because it's the climax, Lewis Carroll switches up the rhyme scheme. He stops rhyming everything at the end of the line, which is called end rhyme, and starts rhyming inside the line. This is called internal rhyme. So, through and head don't rhyme. But two, two, through and through all rhyme, and dead and head rhyme. But then snicker, snack, and back both rhyme as well. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frab just day, kaloo, kalay, he chortled in his joy. Notice 
This is the last original stanza. The last stanza is a repeat of the first. So Lewis Carroll uses all the different types of rhyme. The first line doesn't rhyme with any other. And this is the main point of the poem. The main point of the poem is the father telling the son, go kill the Jabberwock, and the boy going off and doing it. So this is the culmination of the whole poem. Then boy rhymes with joy, the second and fourth rhyme, and then the third one, oh frab just day, kalu kale, has internal rhyme. And then finally, we are back to our last, but also first, stanza. "'Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borough groves, and the mome wraths outgrabe." Notice that Carol uses the first stanza as the end stanza. Poets used to do this for poems that were meant to be read aloud or recited to alert the audience to the fact that the poem was ending. Shakespeare does this exact same thing in his plays. When a scene comes to a close, a character will say two lines that rhyme. It's called a rhyming couplet. Couple because there's two of them. Couple means two. Um, the play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. And it alerts the audience, aha, this is the end of the scene. In a similar fashion... Because he has repeated the first stanza as the last stanza, it alerts the audience, aha, this is the end of the poem. It is now time for me to clap. I hope you enjoyed the Jabberwock, if you, or the Jabberwocky, if you enjoy all kinds of different poems, and Lewis Carroll in particular, he has tons of interesting stuff out there. Not just Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, but Through the Looking Glass is also an excellent book, and I would highly recommend as a read. Thank you so much for being with me. Next time, look forward to Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. Have a wonderful day.